Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this video I want to take you from start to finish on a luxury bathroom that I did just this last week to show a variety of different techniques that you can use in your real estate photography. Now this particular bathroom has some challenges even though it looks like it would be simple because it's mostly all white. There's a view to the outside. It has uh, black window frames and so how would you do a window pole? It's also got a lot of light coming in so we've got some color balance issues that we have to be aware of. We can't over flash. We have to be careful about our exposure settings that we use and also how much flash is used. Also if you uh, take a close look at that picture you'll notice that it was also cropped down from the top. So this was using a fake tilt shift. So a lot of stuff will be going on in this particular edit. So it's a bit of a lengthy video, but it's really out to cover a lot of things. Especially, I've getting a lot of requests on, hey, you show window pulls using the darkened mode technique around white window frames. What happens when you're against wood? What happens when you're against black window frames like this or shears around the windows or something? Well, cutting to the chase on that just real quick, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna explain uh, why as I step through this video and all the different steps and processes involved with uh, composing it and then shooting it lighting it, editing it. Uh, but basically when it does come to the darken mode window pulls, kind of a spoiler alert on that end, is that it's a relative lighting issue when it comes to darken mode. So it really doesn't matter. It's the same technique no matter what window you come across, no matter what window frame uh, you're going to be uh, surrounding that window. So anyways, a lot to cover in this video. Let's dive right into it step by step on how to shoot this particular luxury bathroom. So we'll start off in Lightroom. This is the finished shot. There was quite a bit that went into this, so I want to be able to cover all that with all these various frames you can see down here on the bottom. So first thing I did was I shot it extremely wide. This is the ambient shot. And you can see that this is a lot of ceiling that's up in here. It's a little bit wider than what I want, but the camera is at the right height that I want, and I'm back far enough, and I know that later I'm going to crop it down so it would be about like this. So that gets me the height that I want. It shows more floor than ceiling, so it's good. It's known as a fake tilt shift. Super simple thing to do. I show that in other videos as well. So anyways, this was the ambient shot, but this was a tricky ambient shot. So there was a lot of sun that was really flooding into this room. And because of that, I went outside of the normal exposure settings that I talk about in my books. And by the way, you don't need any of those books uh, for this particular video, but I do have a link in the description for this video to the series. But one of the things you'll remember possibly if you have my books from the interiors book is that I like to use ISO 320 F 7.1, but here just to get a good enough exposure, Exposure, I'm at ISO 200, F8, 140th of a second. Now, I could have possibly still used ISO 320, but it had been very difficult later to get window pulls and other stuff. And with this kind of a, an exposure on this bright of a room, I don't really need it. I can go down to ISO 200, F8, and use 140th of a second. Let's see why. So next thing I'm going to do, and by the way, there was more ambient shots than that. You can see that I'm trying to get my histogram eventually to where I liked it, which I talk about is about three quarters of the way over being right of center. Okay, so the next thing is flashing. So I started flashing this. You can see that my flash power isn't enough. Now I'm just hand holding a speed light above my head. And so I'm going here, trying more until finally I got something here I liked, which is where I'm once again exposing to the right. And I've got this histogram over here, uh, right of center, very well right of center. Now the next thing I would typically do is I might start popping each side of the room. And I'm doing this very quickly just by hitting a dial um, on, the, uh, on the speed light and then hitting my shutter release and just click, 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 click. I do each side like that and it's just kind of a habit when I'm doing luxury homes I might need it. And I knew this going into it because prior shots showing a longer area of the bathroom I did it. Let me show you an example why I did this. Let's back up here when I first entered the bathroom. So when I did, this was the shot of entering this particular bathroom. <clears throat> Excuse me. So 
what I did, okay, I could take, you know, here's my ambient shot, but then I did a flash shot and yeah, I'm exposing really well in the foreground here, but the background has a lot of color cast going on in here because it's not getting any flash. So what I typically like to do, even though that's better than what the ambient shot showed for color, I then, after taking the four shot, and I want to take a simple shortcut, don't need a lot of light, I'll then just start stepping in and doing some quick pop to see if I can use one of those. And then I, of course, do the other side. So this gives me the ability to composite two of these together. If I needed more flashlight in the foreground, then I've got this, which I can edit over top. So maybe that would be a good video for another time, but just to give you the reasoning why I did what I did by doing these uh, side, by, side to side composites, which I never ended up using. Now, one thing I did do next, though, as I'm walking around here real quick, is I started showering popping and so I go around the shower I start popping away and I'm going to show you the reason for that when we get into the editing but this is to really highlight the inside of that shower and you can see it here as compared to just even a standard flash shot which would be dull looking inside if we go back to the ambient layer it looks even worse with way too many reflections so by popping something inside of the shower then we're lighting the inside of the shower there's going to be fewer reflections on the outside of it. So we get a, a more impactful uh, type image there. Next comes up is the window pole. So now I'm trying to expose for the window pole and I have to find something that looks like a good outside exposure. So I just start taking some test shots here with no flash till I find something that I like. Now, I wouldn't do this for every house. Once again, this was a $2.8 million listing here on the Harbor, um, Channel Islands Harbor here in Ventura County, California. So it was worth it, especially for the gig getting paid um, to, to do this, that yes, we make sure this is accurate. So I like the exposure where I am and then I start shooting my window pole shots. Now I ended up using this one and people ask all the time, it's like, well, you always show in your tutorials a white window frame. Well, isn't that really easy? What happens when you have a black window frame? What happens when you have a wood window frame to do the darkened mode window pole? Well, it's exactly the same. It doesn't matter. You're basically overexposing the interior while exposing for the outside. It's the same process. I shoot hundreds of homes every year and all kinds of types of window frames. I've done this for many years doing the same technique. Trust me, it doesn't matter. If you're having a problem with a non-white window frame, you're not using enough flash power. So anyways, you can see I did use a lot of flash power here and I'm getting some uh, flare inside here. So what I do next is after shooting a few of them where, yeah, I could repair it doing whatever, um, I end up taking always a repair shot. And this always tends to be real crystal clear. And you could cut this by itself in, but you definitely want to use a window pull shot, which will give you the clear cut around that window frame. Even in this case, and of course, no matter what's between it, that's the idea. We'll get to that in post-processing in just a second. But first, what we're gonna do is take all of these that we select so we've got our uh, window pull repair, we've got our window pull, and then I select all these guys here, which will then be our uh, one shower pop here. We've got another shower pop here to edit that particular uh, um, uh, artifacts out. And then we've got a flash shot that we like to use, which was uh, this guy here. And then we also then have our ambient shot. So what you would do, you'd right click on that and say edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So I've already done that and this is where we are. So let's cover this next. So at the very top, we've got our ambient layer. And of course, this is why I shoot in that particular order. Got our ambient, got our flash shot, got our shower pops here. You can see uh, that I've got two of them here so I can edit myself out of one. And then we've got our window pull and our window pull repair. So we'll start at the very top with this editing process. And you've probably seen me do this quite a bit. I call it the 50-50 flambient, and that's where I'm gonna take this into a typical uh, ambient layer. Now it was set to normal mode, but I would change that normal mode to luminosity. Boom, immediately we can see that the, uh, the colors are improved because we're relying on colors from the normal mode of the flash layer and then the ambient layer is set to luminosity mode.
Now it's too much luminosity, so we want to change the opacity of that. So we'll change that opacity down to 50%. See how that looks. Let's change that opacity up to 60%, 70%. We can go maybe to 80%. That looks very natural, but let's take it down to about 70. We could even go to 75%, okay? So now we've got a pretty good looking balance of flash and ambient going on there. You could reduce it even more. Like let's say if we went to seven and now you can see there's less glare around the tub. So the next thing is, after we're happy with that blend, now of course you've seen me do this in the books and throughout other videos, where we put a mask on here and paint that in. In a lot of cases, that's the best way to do it. This is just a shortcut, that 50-50 flambient. All right, now let's take our window, excuse me, our shower pop. So we'll take the first shower pop up to the very top. <clears throat> excuse me, and what we're gonna do is uh, highlight the, uh, we're going to add a layer mask and then we're going to cut in around that shower surround. So let's go layer, mask, and then we're going to go to hide all. So layer mask, hide all. Then let's take the polygon tool and let's draw a polygon around that shower surround. So around all of this marble. We'll take it like to this edge. It's always good to go on a corner someplace to make it blend really good like that and go up here to the top and close that polygon. Reverse your colors over here from white to black to black to white by hitting X, press your delete key, and it's there. Switch your colors back by pressing X again, and now let's take the other shower pop up to the top, boom. Now we've got that. Now we can paint this guy in as we want to. So we'll go layer, mask, hide, and obviously we need to brush in this over here to hide my hand. And you can see another reflection is starting to show up over there. We can fix that easy enough. I'll show you how. But we can then go uh, shift click on the mask and see if there's anything more we want to add. Possibly not. Okay. So now what we can do is unselect that with control D. Now that looks unnatural, way too bright up here. So what I like to do on luxury homes like this is I'll grab both layers by shift and clicking both layers, and then right click and then group them. So we'll say group from layers. You can name it whatever you want. Now what you can do is add a layer mask. So once again, you'd go to the layer menu, you'd add a layer mask and you'd reveal all. Now what you can do is take your eraser at a low flow. We'll use, let's say about 30%. You can erase some of this where you feel it's a little too much. So now we have a natural looking type of shower pop. Now <clears throat> it's got a little bit going up here with this uh, reflection showing up. So we can also just even erase that out of there. So to your heart's content, you can do whatever you'd like there. So, all right, so now um, that could you'd probably be edited out even more with cloning and whatnot. So now let's move on to our window pole. So we've got our window pole layer down here. Let's move that all the way up to the top. Okay. And now, excuse me, I just put that into the group. Let me add that all the way up to the top, drag it above the top here. Boom. Okay. Now what we'll do is like any other window pole, we change it to darken mode. And then we'd add a layer mask and we'd go to uh, layer layer mask, and then hide all, okay? Now we'll take the polygon tool, and let's zoom in here a little bit, see what we're doing. And to make this really quick, I'm gonna draw a polygon around this entire area. Doesn't matter if I'm on the black, doesn't matter if I'm on the white, because it's all overexposed, right? Now reverse your colors from going from white to black to black to white by hitting X, hit the delete key, and boom, there's your darken mode window pull. Now a little bit of this came off onto the sides over here, so we can just easily get rid of that. You notice that wasn't on the black part of the window frame, that was on the white. And that's because I fiddled around with some of the saturation adjustments and stuff before I put it on there. But anyways, you can just delete that as you see fit. Another way to do that too, is you can now take um, an eraser or a brush. Oop, I just did it the wrong way there. 
I need to reverse my colors there and do that. So you can also take a little bit of a brush. If you want to blend that in better to the, the window frame, you can brush that in. And of course, this is the method that I show in the books is using a brush instead of the polygon. So whatever you feel would be most comfortable, the idea is you paint that in. Now comes the tricky part. We want to add a repair to get rid of this and any other reflections. So we'll take the repair layer and take it all the way up to the top and then add a layer mask on that too. Layer, layer mask. Hide all. <clears throat> okay, now what you can do is you can just paint where you want, but another way to do this for safety is to use a polygon tool and don't go to the edge, but just kind of get near it, see like that, and then you're safe knowing that when you're doing any painting in here, it's going to be selective. Now, some people have seen this on prior videos and they go, well, why don't you just use the repair layer? That's because I'd have to get exactly to the edge of that window frame. That's what the darken mode window pull is for. So I don't have to do that. Now I can take a brush and just anywhere in here that I need to make a repair, I just start tapping some of that in there. Boom. Now we're repaired. So I'll go ahead and deselect that. Let's zoom out and see how we're looking. So that's looking pretty good. Not bad at all. Now we might want to also change some of our white balance. We might want to uh, change some of this uh, uh, color cast that we have up there. And those are all other things that I show in prior videos um, to, to get rid of some of that. One quick way to do that is to take your flash shot, duplicate that layer with Control J, and then we'll go up here to uh, image and we'll go to uh, adjustments and we'll go to match color. Okay. In here, there's a little neutralize checkbox. So you check that. And you can see, eh, did it change it some? Maybe not a whole lot. Looks like we were actually really good. There wasn't a whole lot of cast, but that actually neutralizes the colors. You can change the color intensity a little bit like that. And if you do like that, then what you can do, you can say, okay, and then you can add a layer mask to hide it all and then brush that in where you feel like. It was maybe a little bit uh, too much up here where some of those lights were. Very minor adjustments. It's more for luxury types of uh, properties, but it helps to then neutralize those colors when you have a problem. Anyways, just like before on any other editing, we're gonna go and flatten this. You now you can save it as a PSD file, by the way, if you want. And also just a couple other things here, just real quick. You feel there's a little too much ambient there? Go to your ambient layer and add a layer mask where you reveal it all, but then you just tap out some of it with an eraser. So if we wanted to show that faucet just a little bit better, that's all you have to do. A little too much glare down here coming in through that window, that's good too. Zoom all the way out, that looks good. Now we've got a lot of ambient coming in here and it really didn't show up much on the flash, it did, it just made it worse. So we can edit that out too if we want. Real quick step to that. Now, if you want to do something non-destructive, select all your layers. Go to select, and then you want to select uh, your layers, which is all layers right here. And then you can duplicate those with a control J, right click over here, and then you want to merge those layers. So now we have something that's merged of everything that we want to use. Now we can edit this whole thing instead of flattening it and going, oh, we made a mistake, we need to go back. So now you can go up here. You might be able to use like a, a content aware fill. Let's try that. So we'll use a polygon here and we'll draw a polygon around this. And then we'll go to uh, edit and then we'll go to fill and we'll use content aware here. Now there is a content aware fill in the other, in the menu where you have a lot more control, but a lot of times this will take care of it. Let's see if it does and boom, it did. Look at that. So that looks pretty good. So now we can also go back and see the difference if we just turn on and off this layer and we can see, yeah, that took care of that reflection. Really nice, so good job there. Now we'll just take one last look down here. If there was something else we missed, we can just use this with a mask just for that one particular area, but I think over Overall, that's pretty good. Let's go up here though where we had a problem with that flash reflection that was showing up. Do we still have something there? It's a little bit of something kind of showing there, but I really wouldn't worry about that too much of whatever that was. So let's just go back out here. That looks fine. So now we can go ahead and flatten it. So let's go to layer. And then way down here at the bottom is flatten image. 
Now when you save it, that's gonna go over to Lightroom. So here we are in Lightroom, and now let's find, put in our final adjustments. So what I would do here is put in, for instance, maybe a light bump, you've seen these in the books before, and that helped to straighten it, and it added some other things. As you can see up here, it took down the highlights, some of the whites and all that. Let's do the geometry first though. We wanna do our fake tilt shift by cropping down from the top. So we'll take this and we'll crop it. Get a little bit of those lights in there, show how nice that is. Try to center that over top of the tub, something about like that, I think that's good. Now we can check our final geometry and we can see that the horizontals are off. It's always almost impossible to get this completely right. The verticals, eh, they're pretty good, but I can see the alignment's off, so let's just rotate it just a little bit. That took out some of that problem up there, but now we can start adjusting the horizontals to then line that up better and make it look like we're right on track. Okay, now let's crop that a little bit more, see how that looks. Bring it up maybe a little bit. Did we go too far? We did, so now what we can do instead of moving the slider, we can just put in numbers. Go eight, maybe seven. Okay, does that look good? I think that's not so bad. Now we probably don't need to even tilt it. We can go back here to zero. And I end up fussing around with these single point perspectives like this for quite a while until I get it exactly the way that I want. Now the final adjustments on the tweaks here, the whites are a little bit too much. I'd probably bring down the shadows. The shadows then will bring in a little bit more of the black and the marble. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then also I'd probably cool this down a little bit. So I'll bring it down maybe one, maybe two like that. I think that looks pretty good. You can see we're still exposing to the right, but overall that looks fairly good. So we can maybe fuss around with a little bit more of this up at the top, but overall if we like this, then we just go ahead and export it, and then the final product looks like this. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was useful for you and that you can use some of these techniques in your real estate photography as well. If you did like this video and you want to see more, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.